We almost got taken to the cleaners. No road trips ever complete without having some issues with the truck. We are misled. We need to tell more people about this. Till further notice, we are on a mission to explore, create, and we hope to inspire you to try new things too. Last week, we took you to a must-see, one-of-a-kind attraction in Southern Colorado. You won't ever see anything like this anywhere else ever again. In this video, we meet up with family and friends at Denver Area State Parks. And we were reminded how unsettling it can be to have unexpected truck problems that could come at a jaw-dropping price. I mean, we'd be talking take out a mortgage on the house kind of expensive. Now we're at Cherry Creek. Look at this. We've got afternoon shade trees. And Gracie has all this field right out by us. Oh, I think. Okay, can you carry this one? <laughs> yeah, I've been carrying this axe around in the truck for about four years, and I've only brought it out to use it maybe twice. Tonight's the night we're going to have s'mores and bratwurst with a grandchild. We had to bribe our grandson with s'mores to get him to come see us at the RV. How many times in the three years we lived full-time RVing did we build fires? Because we got the fake fireplace inside and it's just too easy. Oh, yeah. TP technique going, that's good. Smoke's already following beauty. Good job. Told you so. Nice. Gotta get the nice other side. Fire. I'm gonna get you. How is it? Mm -hmm. Good. Your beer is coming. Oh yeah. Gooey gooey. <laughs> Give me a s'more. Houston, we have a problem. We've got a exhaust fluid system fault on the F450, which could be anything. We got a predicament because we have to leave this state park in two days, move across town, and go to another state park. It's going to be shutting us down to 50 miles an hour. Not going to be fun pulling that thing. But the bottom line is we got a problem. we got to get it taken care of. One of the weaknesses of the diesel engine these days is the diesel exhaust fluid system. And we've replaced NOx sensors in the past. We've had, you know, this isn't our first rodeo as far as these kinds of problems. But anyway... I'm gonna strike while the iron's hot. It's early Monday morning. I'm gonna, I found a, a shop across town. I think I just heard Scott get back home from the diesel mechanic. Let's hope for some good news. Well, it's a diesel. Not sure it'll pull the fifth wheel, but it's the diesel. Where's our truck? Yeah, diesel shop's busy and they gave us a loaner car because they can't work us in in one day. So anyway, nice to have this. It's got 202,000 miles on it and it's a diesel Jeep Liberty. And I didn't even know they existed. So live some, learn some. Now we're just going to wait for a text from the uh, shop and find out what's wrong with the emission system and find out what the bill is going to be hopefully it's an easy fix if they have to order in parts or something like that then they can clear the codes and we'll be able to drive faster than 50 miles an hour to get to the next campsite which is good because we're going to be on interstate almost the whole way are you familiar with how the dpf and the icr cat works and everything from a novice level but yeah <laughs> is that is that what's causing the the uh the failure? The the, yeah, there's um, you, your digital particular filter you have to back behind the cat and the cat is in the front part of it and the cat is actually failing. Why don't you probably put a load on it or drive it pretty hard, it will probably actually fail the test and it'll probably reset the check engine light as well too. And so what am I looking at? I was thinking, okay, at the worst it might be five thousand. Well, Twelve thousand dollars basically. Yeah. I mean, there's worse things. We uh, think of how much it would cost to buy a new truck. We gotta look at the positive. 
Good morning from Cherry Creek State Park. We uh, went and got the truck, cleared the codes, and we're gonna fill you more on that later. We've got to get this towed over to Chatfield. Anyway, while we've been here at Cherry Creek State Park, we had done a lot of vlogging. We've done a tour of this park before. I'll link that above and in the description below. And I'll give you a little preview of our site. We did have a ton of fun riding on the bike trails and around the lake. We had shade every day, all day because of these big, beautiful trees that we got to watch the colors change in. They have an amazing big beach here on the lake too. And you know, paddle boarding, boating, all that stuff. It's a really nice place. All the state parks are really nice in Colorado. We are in the Gold Rush Loop. It is a little noisy at night because we're closer to the highway, but not enough that it kept me awake. We also had full hookups here, which was nice after being at Lathrop. But we have been so busy with family and friends and things every day that we just haven't been vlogging. We've just been enjoying. I also got a chance to do a little crafty, creative stuff while we were here. I just took one day and I did it because I was in the mood and I was inspired. I'm just taking care of my crap and then we'll hit the road. Literally the crap. I just wish diesel emissions problems were as easy to take care of as getting rid of your sewage. It costs you nothing to dump the sewage. I mean, all you gotta remember is that shit runs downhill. Funny how when people start out RVing, one of their biggest worries is dumping the black tank. Let me tell you. That's the easy part, folks. I never ever forget to lock up the hitch like first thing. So I always leave the the uh, lock sitting here to remind me. Except for that one day going through the middle of Amarillo. It was my fault I didn't double check in. But we had to make a quick pull over and we're lucky that we didn't uh, pop the RV off the hitch. Oh yeah, one more thing about this park, just to be aware of, yellow jackets. Lots and lots of yellow jackets. Trying to get into the RV, trying to pester you when you eat. So if you've got a remedy for keeping them away, bring that. All right, light check. Gonna watch Scott pull out because of these trees. Gotta watch his tail swing, you know. Hey, baby. Going to another campground? Today we're driving about 20 miles across Denver to Chatfield State Park. And once we get all hooked up there, I'm gonna take the truck down to a emission specialist down in Commerce City. Yeah, because yesterday we got a quote that would require us to basically mortgage the house, I think. Forgot to take the trash. <laughs> we seriously forgot to stop and put our trash in the dumpster. Well, like we showed you, we, we remembered to put the padlock on the hitch, but then we left a bag of trash sitting up on the toolbox, and we're on the on-ramp for the interstate, and Tammy says, oh no, the trash! It was pretty hilarious. And it's not even tied up very well, so all of our trash would have been flying all over. Gosh, I'm glad I noticed that in the nick of time. It's always something where you think we're newbies out here. Anyway, I've got the stinky trash in the truck now. No play, no yellow jackets running. People at the park were just waving, and I, I thought they were waving goodbye. <laughs> they were probably <laughs> waving, hey, you got a trash bag on your toolbox. Okay, onward and upward. Did we forget anything else? This is a nice site. I just realized we've stayed in the site before. We got a little bit of a pine tree 
over the RV. We should have maybe not parked that far under it. We'll have to get up there and sweep the slides before we leave this time. We've got all, all this open land behind us. It's a lot more peaceful out here than Cherry Creek so far. Unless we get some crazy neighbors. Full hookups until mid-October and then they turn the water off. I don't know if that'll be when we're still here or not, but anyway, full hookups for now. If you're wondering what I'm doing, it's a little tip, trick for you. We've got this like square foam backer backing and it fits perfect under our slides where there's gaps. And when we're gonna stay somewhere for more than a few days, I put that in. It helps with insulation and it helps keep bugs out. So there's a tip for you, tip of the day. What do you think of your new campsite? Is this gonna be home for a while? No rest for the weary, babe. Tammy found a shop called DPF Alternatives. We're hoping that alternatives means it's not going to cost the small fortune that the shop we went to yesterday quoted us. This guy thinks he can take care of us for a reasonable amount of money. All right, Gracie and I are going to finish setting up the home base here. And uh, yeah, we'll wait for the verdict. I really hope these guys can do us a solid and get this truck fixed for a lot less than almost $12,000. I think daddy's home. Should we go see him? I think I hear Scott pulling up. Let's see what the verdict is. Well, different day, different car. We got an upgrade. Did you trade the truck in? I thought about it. <laughs> if we have to pay as much money as the shop told us yesterday, to fix it, then we may end up doing that. But no, this is our our loaner upgrade because our son Luke let us use his very nice Jeep for the night. Pretty encouraged about this DPF alternative shop. That's all that these guys do is diesel emission cleaning and repairs. So rather than just going out and putting in a whole new emission system, which is what the other shop was telling us we needed to do. These people are pretty darn sure that they're going to be able to get the thing cleaned out for us and refurbished and a lot cheaper. And while I was there, there was a guy picking up his, his F-350 2016, just like ours, the same emission system fault error that we had you know it looks like you know this is a pretty common deal for all of us folks running around with these these diesels i stole a pen because i wanted to remember who these folks were so what they're doing is they got to keep the truck overnight he's going to pull the dpf which is the diesel particulate filter off of the catalytic converter assembly and all that stuff underneath He's gonna put it into a kiln and they let the kiln go to work and 
hopefully it burns off all of the buildup. I guess we'll find out more tomorrow and we'll keep you guys updated. And for all of you out there who are like, just delete your emission system. Just delete it. It's a federal offense, number one. <laughs> and we're public people, so we don't plan on committing any crimes publicly any time in the near future. And we do care about the environment, even though it's a pain in the, you know what, dealing with the stupid emissions system on these diesels. But anyway, hopefully we can breathe a sigh of relief and only spend a fraction of the price that we were quoted yesterday. Remember when you were crying yesterday after... Uh... We found out how much it was going to cost to fix that thing, according to the first shop. Yeah. Well, his shop down there, they have a little waiting room, and there's a sign on the door. You're going to love it. Well, I should have brought Tammy with me, because as you can see, they got a designated crying area. The diesel exhaust system is perfect. And we know that because we found... Uh, another way to take care of a problem that they told us was going to be $12,000. We turned it into $1,965. And we thought this was really a good idea to share this with our community because a lot of you guys have diesels. So if you've been underneath your vehicle, there's a long, long pipe that goes from the engine compartment back to the tailpipe. And part of this long assembly is skinny and part of it is really fat. The fat part contains the three components of the diesel exhaust system. Coming out of the engine block, the first component is the DOC, and then that goes into the SRB, and then that goes in to the DPF. And the DPF is the culprit in this situation. Can you please explain? what they are instead of just the acronyms what do they do i learned by understanding how things work okay look <laughs> forget the acronyms okay coming out of the engine block you've got you've got the first two components which are both parts of the catalytic converter the first part is a diesel oxidization catalyst the second part is the SRB is the selective catalyst reduction component okay and that's where the DEF fluid gets injected into the furthest downstream is the DPF and that's what we have problems with what they did is they pulled this whole thing out of here they cut it into pieces and overnight they cleaned out the DPF filter they found 15 inches of soot inside it which I, I guess is pretty common and uh, he put everything back together. He cleaned up the uh, catalytic converter and pretty much reassured us that we're not going to have a problem going all the way back to Florida. Okay, hey, I'm getting too old for this. If you're out and about anywhere and you end up with this kind of a problem, these are the guys that take care of the problem. If you do go into the location in Denver, tell Junior that we sent you and one piece of advice he gave us that he told us we should pass along to all of our friends. If you've got a diesel, you hit 100,000 miles, you might as well go ahead and take it in preemptively so you don't end up in a situation like we did when you're on the road. And we just want you all to be aware because we almost got taken to the cleaners. There's no reason to spend $12,000 replacing that whole system when you can clean it and refurbish it and it's so successful that he's franchised over 100 locations across the country including florida so he told us that if we have any problems we'll take it to the shop in florida and they'll take care of us but he thinks we're good to go he even gave us a one-year guarantee we're gonna put it to the test but we've been here a week since he fixed it and we haven't had any problems not gonna work so we're just gonna fly by the seat of our pants and take us where the wind blows. And today I think the wind's gonna blow us toward uh, Kansas, which is pretty accurate, the wind blowing in Kansas. But anyhow, that's the plan. We're out of here, Colorado. Colorado's always windy because Utah blows and Kansas sucks. And so we're gonna be going with the wind towards Kansas. <laughs> Sorry if he just offended millions of people. He's just joking.
pine cones and pine needles. Good thing I came up here. Are you ready to go south? You ready to get warm again? Yeah. How do you feel about leaving Colorado? I better get a haircut before I get back to Florida because I'm going to have a frizz top. The thing I love about going back this time of year is all the leaves are starting to fall out of the trees here and pretty quick it's going to be snowing and all no color, all barren. And we're going back to where we can actually go outside and enjoy it. Clean my garage, mow the lawn, pick up branches. Got lots to do. And maybe we'll do a little kayaking. Onward and upward, or downward, southward, eastward. 